So today I'm going to show you about writing a scientific paper. Here's a paper that is finished that is looking at hormonally inducing Holsteins to lactate. And so uh, normally you need to um, impregnate a animal for them to produce milk, but this study was looking at uh, using these different types of hormones to cause a virgin heifer to begin producing milk. So the first thing that you need here is your title. The title should summarize the study and it should basically include all the important parts. So here we have the different types of hormones that were being used in this study and the purpose of the study which is to induce lactation and the organism that we used which was virgin Holstein heifers. After you have your uh, title of the study then you're going to put the authors of the study. Um, first and second author if you worked with a lab partner maybe even third author. Whoever is writing the paper should put their name first. Then the other people that you were doing working with as lab partners go second and third. Then you're going to put the date and finally the university or institution that you're working with such as California State University Stanislaus. Then you're going to have an introduction and you actually go ahead and put in the title here the header and in the introduction you want to talk about the specimen that you use so in this case it's the Holstein dairy cow and you always include the scientific name and that is going to be in italics so boss taurus is the scientific name for cows then you're going to explain oh why you're doing it so this knowledge plays a key role in the success of the dairy industry that's why you're doing this study uh, make sure that you cite all of your information so this fact here that I got about um, 20 percent of the United States milk is produced in California was retrieved from this paper and so now that's in the worked site cited area then you're going to talk about um, previous studies and what other studies have found so in this case I talk about um, the hormones beta estradiol and progesterone that other studies have worked with and then again I'm going to cite the paper where I got that study and you always want to cite the information within the same sentence as the information that you are talking about so here I have the facts and then within that same sentence before the period comes the citation and the citation is always going to be the last name and then the year of the study then um, after talking about some background information here's some more talking about more recent studies and then here I go citing those studies the name the authors of the paper and the year then you want to make sure to include your hypothesis your alternative and null hypothesis so we hypothesize results in lactation cycle and yield closer to normal than in heifers undergoing induced lactation using only estradiol, progesterone, and dexamethasone. So this is my alternative hypothesis. This is what I think will happen. But every time you have an alternative hypothesis, you always have a null hypothesis. And so our null hypothesis is that the results in lactation cycle and yield will show no significant changes as a result of utilization of the RU486 and that is the progesterone receptor blocker 
that we're using. That's the variable that we're testing. So basically the null hypothesis is there's no change and then you'll have your alternative hypothesis that there was a change in the yield, in the milk yield. Then you go to your materials and methods. Again, you always want to have your title here written just like so. And if you want to put in a secondary title, you can. So here we're talking about where the animals were kept and their history. Um, this talks about where we bought them from. We got them from um, a, a stock sale over in Turlock. It also talks about um, heifers were housed and managed according to IUCAC protocol. So anytime there's a protocol, I don't need to explain the whole protocol here. As long as I just say that they were housed and managed according to the IUCAC protocol, that's all I have to say. Then I can cite the protocol in the work cited. Same thing for the procedure. If you have anything that isn't in a protocol, you need to write it down and you have to be very detailed about it. But for the most part, you can just say, we follow the protocol outlined in, for example, the UC Davis Lactation Handbook for Performing Induced Lactation in Heifers. And this protocol is already stated, so I don't have to write it out again. And that's good because this protocol is 20 pages long. So just make sure to cite which protocol you're utilizing. Then you have your results section. Again, make sure your title is there. And in the results, this is kind of a dry section, but you need to make sure that you're using full sentences. Basically, you're going to um, summarize what happened. So the control heifers produce significantly higher milk yield. That's the summary. And then you need to back it up with actual numbers. So you have a grand mean of 7,853 milliliters in the control herd as opposed to 2,812 milliliters of milk here in the treatment herd and then you want to cite the table that has that information and again you cite the table within the same sentence before that period. Then you need to go through and break it down. Um, for this experiment we recorded the milk yields for five days. So you're going to have on day one the average milk yield was 450 plus or minus two milliliters in the control herd. And that is really important that this 450 is an average of all of the animals that were in that control herd. And then the plus and minus two is your standard deviation. So some of the animals had 452 milliliters. So that would be your plus 2 milliliter standard deviation. And so you want to make sure to have this for all of your days and all of your animals. So here we have on day 2, the um, average for the treatment herd was 390 plus or minus 20 milliliters milk. So you always report your average plus or minus your standard deviation. An average really doesn't tell you much unless you also have the standard deviation attached right next to it. So make sure you're always reporting your standard deviations. Then at the end here, oh, let's get rid of that extra period, you're going to cite your figure. And so this figure now shows where all of these uh, numbers came from. Then at the end of your results you're going to say um, you're going to make a conclusion about your hypothesis. So in this case our uh, original hypothesis was that the treatment heifers were going to produce more milk. But what ended up happening was the control heifers produced more milk. So um, because of this, we fail to reject our null hypothesis. 
So the null hypothesis was that there was not going to be a significant change. And there wasn't. We didn't see that the treatment heifers produced significantly more. In fact, they produced less. So we failed to reject our null hypothesis. We never accept our null hypothesis because that's just a principle in science. We either fail to reject, reject, or refute our null hypothesis. Then you're going to move on to your discussion. And this is basically where the results were pretty dry, but the discussion you can more just kind of talk and think about, you know, what happened. So um, in this case, you know, now we're developing a new hypothesis because things didn't work out the way we thought it was going to. So this is helping us to develop a new hypothesis. And then we're going to talk about, um, you know, in the future, maybe we can use a glucocorticoid other than dexamethasone because we thought the dexamethasone was an anti-progesterone. Um, then we talk about, you know, uh, why was this knowledge um, good? You know, why did, you know, how are we going to use this knowledge? And, um, you know, it's totally fine to say that, you know, you're not sure exactly what happened here. And so, you know, you can say that um, process was not fully understood. So, you know, this is the results that we have. This is what we found. We're not really sure what happened, but, you know, at least explain in your discussion that you're not, you, processes weren't fully understood. Then you're going to have figures and tables. So this is where you have all of the tables and figures that you cited before in the results of this discussion section. So here is table one. And to have um, a good table, you're going to have a title. So here's table one, and the title is descriptive. It's showing average milk yield has your unit in there, which is milliliter. And then here, this is actually, let's bump it down so you can see it better. Now it's on one page for you. So you can see each day here, the average of the herd and the standard deviation, and then you have a grand mean. And so a grand mean is like an average of an average. So there's 10 cows in each herd. So this 450 milliliters is the average of 10 cows on day one. Then the grand mean is the average of all the averages here, basically. And another important part to have is you want to make sure you have some type of description. And so this description is going to tell you in words what the table is showing. So we can see that the average milk yield was higher in the control herds, standard deviation was higher in the treatment herds, and the difference between the grand mean was 5,041 milliliters. Here is our uh, figure. So again we have our title here descriptive title. We've got units. Uh, here's another title in the chart, which is just fine. Um, we've got our axes are labeled. Our y-axis and our x-axis are labeled, including the units. We have a legend here showing the treatment and the control. And then also notice you have error bars here. And so the error bars are showing the same information as the standard deviation. And so you can see here that we know this is statistically significant because the error bars do not overlap. If these error bars here were very big and overlapped, then that means the standard deviation was very big. And we can't conclude that they were statistically significant, even though the averages were different. The standard deviation, just like I was saying earlier, 
An average doesn't mean anything unless it's, there's also a standard deviation associated with it. But you can see here that none of these error bars overlap. So all of these averages are statistically significant. So they're significantly different from one another because none of these error bars overlap. And then here we have our description of the graph here and it's basically telling us in words what it shows that average milk yield was significantly lower in the treatment group and it explains here the treatment heifers are the ones that received the RU486 and dexamethasone. Then we have our last part which is the work cited and in the work cited you want this to be a MLA format or similar so it's going to be last name of the author initials of the author and then if you have a second author the year that it came out the title of the study the journal that the study was found in and then the um, when it was published and the dates or the pages. So this is volume 8, pages 45 through 58. And that's pretty much it. If you have all those parts, you've got yourself a nice, complete uh, scientific paper, research paper, that is something you could submit into a journal or definitely submit to school. So make sure to save it, all that hard work.